25 years ago, a group of survivors took shelter underground to survive an insane war that engulfed the planet. When the ashes cleared, they surfaced to a world mutated beyond recognition. Today, outnumbered by hostile forces, they survive as soldiers and scientists, preserving the past. If you have hope for the future, if you want humanity to persevere, maybe you can join the Brotherhood. All right, Squire Everlooked, go ahead and get your shot. Hello, Spankerson. Good morning. I am ready to be shot with many needles. Well, in that case, I'll just uh, get this guy. <laughs> I, I joke, I joke. Oh. I approve. All right, on the count of three, one, two, Three. She stabs him. Yeah. Man, it's just a needle. Yeah, come on, man. It can't go. be that bad. I have been shot, and it hurt less. <laughs> well, we you better walk it tell you. Do I, do, do I get a... Tell you. Do, I get a, a... do I get a lollipop? Actually, I do believe there are some downstairs. Ooh. Thank you! Yes. Next. I get a lollipop. Better get it before Swaffer does, man. And again, on a count of three, one, two, she stabs him before three. <laughs> hey. That's not following the rules. That's how they get you. As always. Thank you, man. Is that it? You're very welcome. It's better for you not to know when it's going to happen. Next. Give me a moment here. Let me place my rifle on the table. Two and three. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Almost forgot my rifle. <laughs> that could have been a problem. <laughs> well, you can use it to defend yourself or, I don't know, germs. And next. Carlson, I'll need to speak to you about the vaccination. Well, okay. Do that later. Sounds good. On me. Okay, here we go. All right, same as before. One, she stabs him early. You better not do it on zero to the next person. This is mean. All right, <laughs> this is abuse. Here, so let's go on, head outside, and make sure the place is safe. All right. Yeah, Paladin Africa really needs to keep those. Uh... Oh, no, it's driving me crazy, man. I can do this. Kermanovich, how long did it take you to do that hair? I did good work, didn't I? Anyway, on the count of three. One, two, and jab. Ah! Ah. Ah, shadow and hell. I am grateful. My turn. I suppose so. Just need you to bend over the gurney here. Reginald, I need you to back up. None of that. <laughs> All right. Stick it in the waist, buddy. One line. There you go. All right. Here we go. One, two, and three. Hello, oh, everyone. Dear. All right, I have officially arrived. Good luck, Reginald. Oh, it's gonna be fun. 
Hey, Fudge, get up here and get your shot. I want to let everyone know that there's a couple of different uh, new colas in the, uh, the Easter bag that's down here in the cafeteria. Uh, take what you want, not what you need. I appreciate for that, Gray. Thank you. She stabs Reggie without counting. Yep. Like, All right, oh. time over. Reggie, come up to this wood line here. Reggie, I knew it would happen to somebody. I called it. Watch just instantly getting stabbed. Yep. Line up here. Reggie. Let me just get up under this armor and one, two, three. Here. Go ahead, Pedia. Don't be scared. Yes. You have to need them. You said the uh, what? It's just a needle. You're getting your chopped. Yes, I know. Yep. So go Am into I... the clinic. Don't be Am afraid. I next? Come on. I'll come. Yeah. I sit here, right? Uh, yeah, unless you'd prefer uh, not in the arm. Here I am. Okay, one, oh, two, Lord, three, go ahead, jab. Uh, get a little bit closer. Around yeah. the wooden line Thanks. there. You're very welcome. Well, hello there. All right. Go ahead. Hey, next. Thank you, sir. All right, hit me in ours. Well, at least you have the easiest arms to get to. Mm -hmm. We're almost fully vaccinated now. All right, here we go. One, two, she stabs me. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> that Everyone didn't hurt at all. Keep this door closed for security purposes. from entering that door from now on. Hey, uh, let me get some uh, drinks. All right. This is so boring. Let's go find some action. Carlson, can I see you up here to uh, discuss? Well, last but not least. One, Later. two, three. Right. Affirmative. Might be a little bit hard trying to find the vein in my age. <laughs> it's all the it's all the whiskey and <clears throat> smokes. All right, I'm heading outside, guys. I'm getting some miss? fresh air. Okay. All right. Are these little things in the corner who are edible? I don't know. I've never tried. What do you think? Um, they taste very. Uh, <coughs> oh God! Um, <coughs> well, I would say. Know. <coughs> oh God! Oh God! Um, you all right? They are totally edible. Please, everyone, grab in. Okay. Uh... What, you do not believe me? <coughs> oh, God. You should probably check on him later. Uh, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm game to touch that thing. I am just saying, they are very delicious. Who have a yeah, cooked Doc, these? when he loses consciousness, we'll bring them to you. I am simply saying, whoever cooked these, very good job. Reg, you know what I won? They're probably made out of asbestos. I'm touching it anyway. I'm gonna put it in my mouth. I don't care. Uh, another metaphor. 
Reginald, you are a true friend. <coughs> oh, that is kick. Hey, uh, if this is a celebration, shouldn't we have some fireworks? No, no, no. That just won't do. I don't think we can spare the gunpowder. Bad idea. And if you think about it this way, we it might be a celebration, but we are still in a motherfucking deadly area. Yeah, let's not bring the Scorch Beasts here. Yeah. Yet. You're a natural, kid. Look, I am all... Oh, I'm, I would be the first one to nakedly fist fight a Scorch Beast drunken. But trust me, we are not ready. I'm just glad that we like, have our... Do you say that, like, there will be a point where you will be able to bear fist fight a Scorch Beast? You never know. He didn't say successfully. That is also true. And, to be honest, you never know. Now we have a vaccination against the Scorched. Perhaps call, Skype calls him to make some kind of super mute, uh, super mu super human gene. Huh? That's not going to help you ever do that. They tried that and it turned out poorly. There is always hope in the future. What is that chapter's name, man? Eh? Knight Carlson, sir. Hey, what's up, Roseburg? Um, permission to leave. Yeah. If you don't want to stay. I need to take a walk for, for my own. You know, I'm not much of a celebration person, so. But tell me when um, there is some hot food and I'll join you, okay? All I'll right, be on the radio. Good. Okay? Alright, you got oh. it. Yeah, so, yeah. I'll be on the radio. See you in a while. Later, man. Does anybody else realize that the water kind of tastes a little bit weird? Like, weirder than usual? Uh -oh. Maybe you're just used to the vault water. <clears throat> yes, it is totally not uh, <clears throat> something else. Yeah, it's not like all uh, water was recycled uh, thirty or forty hundred times. So you know. No, it is totally not. <clears throat> it's totally not the alcohol I expected. With <clears throat> Monsieur Carlson, what is on the next? What is our agenda for the next great thing? Next great thing. Well, obviously, we're going to take down the Scorch, right? Obviously. Yes, but I mean, you know, you do things in small steps, right? What is the next small step to the next great thing? Uh, right now, it's to relax. We just accomplished something huge. Let's celebrate it, man. I don't want to think about uh, what comes next yet. I don't think anyone here needs to right now. I don't think a lot of you grasp the fact that we don't have to worry about the Scorch virus turning any one of us into one of those damn things. It's huge. Absolutely, it's huge. Yes, but from a perspective, from my perspective, I am happy that we have achieved this. I feel great as a chapter that we have achieved this. I believe in my brothers as my brothers believe in me, and my sisters, of course. But I am just wanting to continue. I don't know why, it's just something burning in the back of my head. Being able to get the revenge I desire. Don't worry, man. There's always tomorrow. I think all of us kind of have that ambition, but what you need to realize is you're going to burn yourself out if you try to, you know, push yourself that hard constantly. But I, under I understand how you feel, and I feel the same. I'm just saying. But this is still good. No, I, I totally agree, but my burnout, I'm way past that. Being alone for so long, and then being able to rejoin you, to rejoin the chapter. Oh, God. The time in the ash was not pleasant. Now, who has a story for hey, someone, eh? What's up? Mm. Good evening, Fadja. No, not much. Just, you know, thinking, drinking, you know. Mm. Well, this is a peaceful place. Mm -hmm. I like this it lake. that way. Okay, um, anybody got anything to 
Oh, I know idea. How about we tell our most heroic stories? Yeah, when you know, I like spent huh? a lot of time on my own since we left the vault, so... Yeah. I'm not... Outside the mission, i uh, not very much of a socializer. Not so. me. Oh. <laughs> Carlson pops the uh, cap off a of beer. Yeah. I suppose I can kind of tell what Sometimes happened during one of the patrols that uh, took in. So, me, Night yeah, Redcliff, and I, I believe like McCurney, uh, yeah. we had to do a rundown it's into... For your... I think you're thinking of Max Aro. Ah, yes. Kind of get you two mixed up, huh? I've only been on a couple of trips out. Yeah, but you were with the one with me and Soro down to, uh... What is it? That main, uh... Nesting site? Of the Scorched that Beasts? Was... Either way, the, uh, triple's messy, but it had results. Just the three of us going down into the Cranberry Bog, and, well... We encountered a lot of stiff resistance. First, a horde of super mutants down by a train station, packing all sort of different weapons miniguns, mini nuke launchers, missile launchers you name it, they had it. And just the three of us, we managed to slowly cart our way through and uh, collect a couple of different weapons, including a couple mini nukes from a couple of the uh, super mutants. And then once we got closer to the nesting site, then we started seeing Sierra Bravos. I think I remember counting like four or five of them. There's this one big one that, I swear, it ate mini nukes like it was nothing. Sero kept firing mini nuke after mini nuke at its face, and it just didn't seem to really care. It was a, uh, it was a tricky fight. We had to make sure we were still in cover while making sure the Scorched wouldn't overrun us. But by the end of it, we managed to kill off four Scorched Beasts and a slew of Scorched. And we pulled the hell out of there, because I sure as hell didn't want to stay there for that long. And we made it back here. I'm surprised we didn't get, you know, heavily infected from that damned uh, virus. And this vaccine kind of came in at a good time, too. Starting to feel sick again. I kind of wonder if, since they're mutated creatures, if Bravos distant. Well, we will see a little bit less scorch down there, but I don't think that will be true either. The place seems to be like a giant magnet for scorched. Everything is a giant magnet for scorched. Yeah, well, imagine that being the. Uh, the centerpiece of all where the scorch show up. It's really unusual. What you mean down in the cranberry box? Yeah. That area where they were nesting at, it it looked like multiple nukes had struck the place. The ground was completely torn up. Well and there were giant holes in the ground all over the place and there was nothing but smoke and ash spilling out from them and whenever we got close enough to it another Sierra Bravo would pop out or more or scorched would just randomly show up. Quick question, uh Yep, there it goes. Look warning. Fucking locos. Yeah, turn your pit boy off. Ignore that. We are currently safe, no worries. I will not. The thing is, if we if we turn it off and ignore it, there are crazy people out there. There would be perhaps a person that would nuke the bunker, huh? Yeah, we're fine for now. No, but uh, I got a, I got a good story. When I was still on, when I was still on solo scout duty. Sure. So give me the details. Here I was. Charleston, all by myself, currently building my shack up, getting ready to go out for a hospital. And here I was, after looking onto AVR Medical for multiple days, building my shack. Luckily I found an outhouse, 
if I was at outhouse, I would have many, very, many, many weird times. But then. Red Cliff, just so you know, we have an observer from the south. But then, as I was watching, we were Avia Medical. I saw a control of super yeah, robots come them. in and out every time. Every the day, their numbers would increase. I could hear the mutant hounds barking, 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 coming closer to my camp. There was only one thing I could do. Could anyone guess what I, what I had to do? What did you have to do? I had to hide in the outhouse. <laughs> and not in the clean part, I'm telling you. Oh boy. Yes. Oh, tell me you had a suit of some kind, man. A suit would not have helped me. Oh, oh. It was die or do. Like, do or die, you know what I'm saying? It was either this or being eaten alive by a group of seven mutant hounds and a patrol of super mutants. I I just want to know how long it took before you could like I don't know get clean. <laughs> and have you yet? Of course, I have gone, gone to many decontamination showers. Due to this, I have a very weird habit of going into decontamin decontamination shower all <laughs> every time I can. Do you want less... me to give you some bars of soap every so often? You know. Reginald, I do not worry. I have stockpiled soap, toilet paper. Kenny, do you have anything? Go, cool. Reginald, Carlson. I think I got one. Alright, let's hear it. It's not so exciting, but just more of something that Cole wanted to do to me over a certain crate at Huntersville. Me, oh boy. Ivanovich, and Cole all went on a patrol. I think there was someone else with us. Was there someone else with us, Cole? Um, I can't remember. It was either four or three of us. I, I, I can count three. I don't know about fourth. No, there was four of us. It was Redcliffe, Kermanovich, you and me. Uh, Redcliffe, yes. Okay. Uh, we went to Huntersville, uh, patrolling around the area, and there was a, a government supply drop. Hey, fun stuff. I, uh, I was tasked with opening it, and then it wanted to detonate itself after I opened it. It was very unhappy with me. As much as Cole was unhappy with me, he wanted to—he—he he, he wanted me to be chucked at it. Well, come on now, give him a little bit of context. Context as to what? We were in Huntersville. There was a crate. It was explosive, and you—you you got angry at me. And I mean the context—the context about why I said I'm going to throw you at it. Was it because I drilled it open? No. Yes, if I were... recall the reasoning, because you decided to take a drill to a pre-war military box. <laughs> What's wrong with that? again? Really? I'm just saying, even I am not that stupid. And that means something. Well, that wasn't the reason either. The reason was, is that it was going to explode. It ended up not, until later. But it hadn't yet. The Reginald goes, well, I can throw a grenade at it. Or a rock. I said, or I could throw you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mrs. Carlson, come on, you must... Why do you not tell us a story how you met the big old grumpy there? I think that's a very <laughs> good idea. Um, I mean, I suppose because it's not horribly interesting. To be fair, that's everything true. is interesting in this wasteland. I mean, in the scope of being out here, it's not very interesting, but at the time, I was enthralled. Oh, oh man, me, you make my heart beat. It's a romance of parable. Speaking of the guy Jack we met, I saw something earlier today that looked a lot like the costume he was wearing. Was it ugly? I guess it was ugly. Did it look like gray? Funny. It was on the east side of the ash heap, sleeping in the middle of the road. It looked like a giant creature that took up both lanes of the road and had all kinds of, you know, grayish, whitish, woolly hair all over it and two large horns on its head. We've seen something like that before, haven't we, Carlson? Yeah, I think the Quillbees. 
Was that encountered at uh, Camp Venture at one point too? Yeah, Redcliffe had to draw it off while we all evacuated the area. I believe he um, ran into the first one back in um caravan, the, the caravan kind of scouting mission thing. Yeah, we put a lot of rounds into that thing before it dropped. I was heading south on the road that runs along the east side of the ash heap and was sleeping there. It looked like some sort of gigantic cross between a ram and a sheep or something like that. Yep. We don't know what they are, man. There's definitely uh, an abundance of them, though, from what we've seen. I mean, yeah, there, there was uh, one at uh, Camp Venture. The one that yeah. uh, you killed. Yeah. As I was saying, was... Uh, uh, Miss Carlson, could you go first, please? Oh, no. I, I was done. No, no, no. I heard you starting to speak. You must continue. No quiet tonight. <laughs> no, I was just referring to the uh, the camp venture uh, situation. Being the closest person to that beast, I didn't appreciate it. Well, she reaches sure over that. and jabs her husband in his shot. Well, wow. as long as it doesn't, well, as long as it doesn't smell as bad as Mr. Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the next time PT arrives, I'm going to be doing double laps. But who cares? Nice celebration. <laughs> I think it's more red clip you watch out for there, Ever Lich. Eh. I'm just going to continue to silently look at Red Cliff and wave at him very slowly. Yeah, Everlitch, you got about ten laps. Right up, I'm keeping track. That is nothing, my friend. For this for this kind of party and this kind of good night with my friends and brothers and sisters, I will take 20. Done. Fuck! Nice. Good job. So, Reckler, who's your, uh, friend here? What friend? The he doesn't have friends. The person directly behind you with the gas mask kind of ignoring that. Eh, one more person for the party. They don't seem to be causing any problems. They've been sneaking around for a while. I've been watching them. Yeah, well, I do watch a lot of stuff. Stop being a boring old man and come down here. You know that we may be partying, but uh, the place still isn't 100% safe. And don't so make it my... dirty. Man, you guys are a buzzkill. Uh, uh, at least Gunson is on my side. Brotherhood of Grumpy Old Men. Ooh, <laughs> I like that title. Hey, do we have a tattoo artist? I want to put that on Fred's forehead. I mean, it suits. Excuse me, you mind uh, taking off your mask, uh, sir? Oh, I'm Redcliffe. I drink bourbon and whiskey and beats up death claws yeah, in my bare fists. You're not a sir. Wait. Eddie? What are you doing out here? Oh, you know I them? thought you were uh, further west. No, wait, no, not I'm west. Good. South. I'm going back on patrol. Yeah. I'm going to join Mr. Monsieur Red for a bit. I need to stretch my legs. Swaffer and stay still. You're making everyone nervous. Or you could just observe. That's fine. Uh, wasn't bad. Any leftovers on the grill? Uh, don't think we even haven't started grilling yet. I'm not sure. I'm not grilling. I'm too late. You guys want to grill? That's all you. It's not my job. All right, then. Not tonight. Any musical instruments here? I'm coming through. I'd rather not uh, attract anything with the sound of really bad music. I heard That's Reginald can, can sing. As much as I'd like the radio. Uh-huh. Since when? Maybe? I, 
What are we talking about? <laughs> Aren't you like Reggie. some kind of pop star or something? Uh, I don't know. Come on, Reggie. I can play the banjo. Let's right. get it together. That sounds good. Oh God. There. Not the banjos. Ah, uh, come on. What's wrong with the banjo? It's a banjo. There needs to be further more to it. We're already. I can play banjo, guitar, whatever. Just I'm give just, me something to play. I am just saying, a banjo is not wrong. Banjos is the the banjo is the musical instrument of the glorious Virginia. See, at least somebody agrees with me. I do go in. All right, there are uh, meat and on the grill. I'll be down at the pond. See you. I think well, the I think... Irish would agree about the banjo as well. Thank you, Rosenberg. Welcome, bro. Yeah, I the think Irish. every instrument is uh, interesting in its own way. Country roads. Take me home. Never oh, like, it's kind of hard to stay quiet if you keep making noise. Already a lot of noise going on anyway. So it's supposed to be a bit of a celebration. There's always going to be noise being made during one. Yeah, okay, yeah our music, uh, music wouldn't of... exist if people didn't make any noise. Noise of the main people gets the attention, but the scouts on the outskirts are quiet so they can see things coming in. Yeah, I'm I keeping my eyes peeled. I'm going to have to head out. I've got to go and do some repairs back home before the next night sets in. All right, McCurdy. Bye. You have a good one. Yeah, take care, scrub. Bye-bye. I will see you all soon. Bye. I got a little hint to all the tall tales everybody was saying from where I was, so... Uh... I think I'm good for now. I've got a story. It's not quite heroic, but it's more of a um, kind of a miner's tall tale. Go for it. Sure. Okay. Maybe some of you have heard this story before. Maybe some of you haven't. But it's a story that's been around with the miners for a very, very long time. So. The miners believe that there is a creature, spirit if you will, that watches over the mine tunnels to make sure everybody's safe. But they're also notorious for stealing tools from people, like pickaxes, shovels, things will go missing. But um, they, it, they're, it, it's hard to explain, they're kind of like I guess you can call them leprechauns, like, they're like that. But instead of having all green suits and a green hat, they have kind of dark black coats and metal helmets, like the miners wear. And um, they walk down the tunnels with these little lights when at least they think nobody's in it, and they check the walls of the tunnel. And they do that by knocking on the walls and it always sounds like metal tinging like somebody knocking on like a tin can and um but they they do this to either warn people of danger lead people to the tools they've stolen or they knock near undiscovered mineral veins to help miners find them now, oh, that's I've never seen them. I've never seen them myself, but um, my grandfather said he saw them once. He was in the tunnel, and he saw it. A little light slowly went down the tunnel. It would stop for a second. He would hear he would hear the metal tinging, and he would keep going. Stop again. Hear the little tinging sound, and it slowly walked down the tunnel out of sight. Now, these little spirits, they also were very, very fond of canned coffee. And sometimes, my co-workers and I 
would leave a little can of coffee at the very end of the tunnel before we would leave for the night. And when we came back in the morning, it'd be empty. Now, we would do this as kind of asking for their blessing, you know, keep them on our side. And um, sometimes, if you're in the ash heap, sometimes you'll be able to hear little metal singing if you listen really hard. And it's probably the little spirits trying to warn you of the dangers that lie ahead. Well, that's, that's kind of cool, actually. Didn't know that. Well, that's an interesting story. I like that story. I think you all got exposed to too much natural gas down in those tunnels. Of course we did. <laughs> I'm not denying wow. that. <clears throat> wow, Redcliffe. You deny him his tool as half a story. Well, no, I, I don't, I don't doubt that. Likes. You know what? You've shit on every story so far. Why don't you tell sorry, huh? I haven't responded to that any story besides that one. I see. Now, you remember back in the vaults. Do you remember that week when, you know, the order came out that we all had to drink canned water instead of out of the recyclers? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> that was because, uh, well, do you remember little Jimmy? I mean, we, I guess he was like 25 at the time, but we all called him little Jimmy because he was an Anderson kid before Anderson even did his, you know, fun stuff. Well, was one he the night, one with the eyes? yeah. Well, I mean, this didn't help because uh, he was a heavy drinker. Whenever he could find it, I think he had a still hidden somewhere. We never found it, but there you go. One night, uh, we get a call from uh, the water recycling plant that we got to go down there, and uh, somebody's causing trouble. So, me and a couple of other security guys uh, get together, go down there in our full gear, and uh, little little Jimmy decided to. Uh, <clears throat> Jimmy open one of the recycling tanks because he decided that he wanted to learn how to swim. This uh, uh, did not work well for him. He was oh, barely conscious by the time we dragged him out of that tank. Now, one of the things they don't tell you about is uh, when your body panics, it'll <clears throat> dump everything that's in it. Oh, oh boy! Man. So, uh, little Jimmy, in his attempt to swim, had befouled the entire water recycling plant. We had uh, got all the story out of him after we uh, let him sit in the drunk tank for a while and got all the water out of his lungs. But because of little Jimmy, right there, that's why you guys had to drink canned water for a week because the guys down in the system had to scrub the thing top to bottom for a while because of uh, foulness. That's lovely. Yeah, I wonder, it's been great. I wonder if he's the same Jimmy that reprogrammed that Mr. Handy to sell lemonade. Um, I'm pretty sure Jimmy was not smart enough for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's no I way he could have done a good deed. I mean, to be honest, that could have Jimmy did. <laughs> no. Oh, God. No, but uh, I've met that lemonade uh, robot. That is pre-war. That is before the world. I don't think that, um, you know, would... Someone's got to be stocking it. Robot? I mean, have you seen the lemonade it says? I think it looks old. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I enjoy his. I enjoy his existence. He makes me happy whenever I see him. Yeah, the stuff you he's selling me. isn't very good, and that's what I'm saying, man. Maybe this Jimmy guy's the one that's out there trying to sell this stuff, and it's selling lemonade in the apocalypse isn't exactly the smartest thing to like make money, you know? Yeah, well, a whole bunch of powdered lemonade left over. I don't know. If you, like listened, if you listen, if you listen to Mr. Squeeze, he does tell you that he has not been restocked and he's making the lemonade on his own with questionable ingredients. Yeah, he said that uh, Master Jimmy's out there somewhere looking for lemons. Yeah, but he hasn't returned, obviously. Quick question. Is because maybe he fell in a tank. No, no, he, he lived through the tank. Uh, yeah, maybe he never learned how to swim. Do you remember that weird competition we had about, um, what was it, uh, can't remember, it's a really weird competition. Do you remember which competition it was? We had so many weird competitions. Whip competition? No. Weird competitions in the vaults. We had so oh, many weird, weird competitions. Oh, weird, as strange. Yes. 
which one in particular are you referring to? Because we've had so many. I was 25 years of boredom, man. People do weird things. What about I wonder if anybody still the... makes turkeys out of tracing their hands. What about the competition of who could who could draw best out of line? Who won that one again? Who won which one? The best out of line? Yes, where where we have to you know you know you know the coloring pages where you, who could make it look the prettiest when drawing out of the line. Oh, I did not take part in that one, but that's an interesting competition in, in itself. I would imagine that uh, I don't know, Scribe Do probably did that one. I don't know. We had coloring paint. We had a lot of things. When, to when we still had coloring pencils, yeah. Well, we kept those for the kids mostly, but um, perhaps Scribe Do like Scribe Do liked eating the crayons. But no, I saw. Um, I, I saw that uh, competition while I was on security duty watching the cameras. You know, I've been meaning to ask. You guys kind of didn't open your vault on schedule. What exactly happened? Honestly, I don't know. Over, over, overseer oversight. Most of us were for, most of us were, for, were not um, in the high ranks of the security team or in the officer duty. Crap. We just use the police ranks. Mm. That, that was all need to know, and we did not need to know. Also, I there was a schedule <laughs> for some of us. I'm pretty sure I overslept the whole vault opening thing. Reginald, what did you do with the vault? I can't remember, man. I think I went into. Uh, I don't know really, but I got a bunch of Pip Boy games out of it, so that's a it's a win for me. I, I think he might have been in the the IT department. <laughs> they never really had he never really had anything to do anyway. That's all they really did. Hollow tape games for twenty five years straight. I remember my first day on security, I had to beat the I had to beat someone with the security battalion. <laughs> You know that actually wasn't supposed to have happened. Look, it's not my fault. Old man, <laughs> old man Johnson ran into me multiple times, screaming about rat roaches. You're supposed to take care of the rat roaches. First, I had to take care of old man Johnson for this was disrespecting my authority. So Didn't you might be the reason the Reese's popped up and started actually hacking everything. You know that there's a reason that you were a private for as long as you were. <clears throat> Have you know, I would have made it to captain in a year. Right. He's off there a bit, man. I think you've had one too many. Look, old man Johnson deserved it because he never gave me that chocolate bar I knew he hid behind his bed. Because it's probably his. No, he stole it from me. He's the whole reason I, en I enrolled in the law enforcement department of the world. All right, Everlicked. I think you should have another, man. He stole my chocolate bar. Fuck you, old Ben Johnson. So is that it, or is that one out of the stories? Yeah, it got dangerously quiet. I guess I quiet can kind of... Uh... Gray. Yeah, mm -hmm. fill us in, man. Tell us a story so, about your experience. Before I ever really encountered uh, you guys on the one day I had set up shop uh, slightly south of vault 76 itself to uh, to basically have a emergency supply of medicine stashed at a uh, ramshackle house that I uh, converted for myself but I also had it there in case if anyone was you know still around would show I'd be able to hand out medicine and one day I go inside and I'm checking all my supplies and I don't even hear the door open and I turn around and he's there, standing there, staring at me, not even saying a word. And it honestly threw me back a bit. I almost tried to grab a, my pistol and almost shot him, but he didn't really 
seem like a threat. He didn't have any weapon equipped in his hands. He was just standing there staring at me. And so I asked him, you know, what he wanted, and he said he needed a bit of medicine for his church. And I didn't really think of it at first, but I gave him a couple stim packs and some uh, medics and ran away in case he ever needed it because, you know, he was one of the few people I ever saw out there in a long while after the Scorched rolled everyone over. And he just, you know, walked out the door without saying another word. And I thought, you know, I was never going to see him again, but every once in a while he'd just show up and he'd talk about, you know, his church and who he was praising, that fluttering one he calls it. Whatever he calls it. Oh. So, yeah. So he he'd show up again and again. And at some point, I said, "Okay, you have to take me to this place and show me where you live," because I was getting tired of him just showing up out of the blue. It, it honestly terrified me a little bit. And so after uh, you know, spending a bit more time with him, he allowed me to take a look at his church even though I, you know, was not interested in joining whatever he was doing, but he showed me his church. It's a ramshackle building built on top of an old train line slightly south of, uh, what is it? Grafton? Yeah, slightly south of Grafton. And it is the strangest experience I think I've ever had. The place is just a giant old wooden structure and it it's just covered in this cultist like stuff i i can't explain it bones vines it's it's truly unnerving once you see it and when you go in there it is built like a church he has pews on to the left and to the right and down the center he stands there inviting you in but in the background there's a giant statue of sorts that's leaking this black smoke and I I kid you not when I went in there and took a look there were squirrels live squirrels sitting in front of the statue staring at it it I oh, I felt like I just wanted to run out of there immediately but I stayed gave him his medical supplies and got the hell out of there so every once in a while I show up give him his medicine and get out we don't talk much but his name's People. Locke and he's a uh, priest I think uh, people cling to all kinds of crazy things to kind of make sense of what's happened and to cope with uh, moving forward in this world you know sure but it's just I don't understand why they would worship that, of all things. Yeah, I don't either, man, but... Like I said, people do strange things to cope. It's a strange world now. I guess that is, it is, which means it's normal now. Which well, and to be honest... help us. And to be honest, his, I, his flyers are top-notch. God, don't tell me that you're thinking of joining him. No, I have my own religion. Oh, right. Yes, the religion... What? The religion of the bullet and the blood order of the steel. Steel be with you. It's definitely Person. better than worshipping a... fictional moth figure thing. Carlson, I swear you better not be indoctrinating people into some kind of, like, side cult that I'm not hearing about. No, no, no. This is, uh, that, no, no, that is me. I'm doing the side cult thing. I, I don't feel well. I think it's poison. Yeah, I was gonna say, check your dust uh, people. I think it's time to go inside. We'll keep drinking down there. <sighs> Oops, sounds good to me. You well, might have just sat down too. Oh well. I'm going to Oh, you going. can sit down inside. Alright guys, that's hurry a, up. Double time, let's go. That, that's a walk. Uh 
I'm gonna go uh, speak with Fedja real quick. Everly, come Fedja. on, go in. Fedja, Fedja, get no, it down I, here. I, I, double time, going, double time, move it. I'm going to be going home. Well, do it quickly. Oh yes, farewell my friends. I will see you tomorrow on the next adventure. All right, I'll see you next time. Au revoir.